are. I've been looking all over the place for you, you know. Oh, hi, Beat. I'm sorry about that. Hey, are you thinking about Rattle and the others? You don't have to worry about them. I'm sure they're all okay. Besides... Reto's not the type to croak from just falling off a bridge. You have a point there. I'm sure you're right. Thank you, Beat. Still, we were pretty lucky back there, don't you think? If we hadn't been picked up by that Baroque ship, I don't know what would have happened. Thank you so much for helping us like this. Don't mention it. It was nothing. Is there any way we can repay you? You did save our lives. Yeah, you've already done so much for us. Is there anything we can do to help out? <laughs> this little squirt here can wash dishes for you or something. <gasps> hey, no fair! You can't start calling me little squirt just because my hat washed away. <laughs> At least it sounds like you're all in good spirits. But I'm afraid there's nothing you could help with. Really, you should probably all just get some rest. Oh, and allow me to introduce myself. My name is Crescendo. I suppose you could say I'm the captain of this ship. Huh? Cre 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 Crescendo? G gee, that's kind of a tough name to say. Couldn't we call you something else? Something easier to say? Beat, please, don't be silly. Besides, I thought you said you were good at remembering people's names. I must say, you're very young to be the captain of a ship. You're a captain? Hey, hold on now. This guy doesn't even have a hook or an eye patch. Hm, there's no way he's a real captain. I'm sorry, Captain. I apologize for her rudeness. Hey, maybe I'll just call you Captain for now. I could remember your name, no problem, but you need to show respect to the ship's captain. <laughs> Feel free to call me whatever you'd like, really. Well, Captain Crescendo, thank you for your kindness. I think we'll get some rest as you suggested. I wonder if Allegretto and the others are all right. I think I'll go outside. Maybe some fresh air will cheer me up.
Oh, the world is all just Frederick's dream. Good evening, Frederick. I see you haven't woken up from your dream yet. <laughs> oh, hello, Polka. Are you having trouble sleeping? Yes. I'm still worried about the others. Polka, there was something I said to you before. About the way everything in the world slowly fades away, gradually losing its color. But since I've come to this place, I've begun to feel as if that is somehow being reversed. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Well, compared to when I first came to this world, now when I look around, I feel as if everything in the world is becoming more vivid, more clear. Could this be the proof I sought? Is this world, which must be a dream, somehow becoming more real? Or does it only prove that I myself am slipping away, fading even faster than the world around me? Oh. For example, I find myself wondering about whether the others are all right. Not long ago, I wouldn't have cared what happened to them. Why should I when none of this is actually happening? But now, I'm genuinely concerned. I don't know why, but I feel a strong sense of solidarity, a connection with the people of this world. Well, I think that's a perfectly normal way for you to feel. After all, it's only natural to worry about people you've spent time with, and grown to care about. You know, before I had this illness, everything around me seemed so dull and ordinary. But since I found out my life would soon be over, even little things seemed to shine with an inner light. Like the sound of wood crackling in a fireplace. The smell of a campfire. Leaves slowly floating down a stream. The gentle sound of falling snow. Now that I think about it, I probably only feel that way because I am approaching death myself and have begun to fade more rapidly. Just as Amelia did. Amelia? My sister. She was only 14 when she was struck down by tuberculosis. The exact age you are now. Oh, your sister was my age when she... I see. How terrifying it must have been for her. Forced to accept an inescapable fate. She must have had so many hopes and dreams. Why? Why does God allow such things to happen to good people? Taking away even her chance to live. Poor Amelia. It is sad, but everyone dies eventually. It's just that for some people like Amelia and me, it happens a little bit earlier, that's all. Besides, in a way Amelia still lives on, doesn't she? She lives on inside your heart, Frederick. And she lives in the wonderful music that your heart creates. She also lives on inside all the people of the world whose hearts are moved when they listen to your music. Amelia won't ever really die. She'll touch the hearts of every generation to come.
through her brother's melodies, she will live on forever. I think that's wonderful. Frederick, do you need any more proof that part of her still lives on than the thought of that? You know, Polka, whenever I'm with you, I feel like I'm talking to Amelia. It's almost as if Amelia is saying the very same things to me. Thank you, Polka. I believe you've taught me something very important tonight. Very important indeed. Frederick, there's just something about you that draws others to you. Since I met you, my way of thinking has changed quite a bit. Although I didn't realize it before, I think I've been dwelling on the past and ignoring the future. Because thinking about the future is just too painful, and you know you're going to die soon. told me when we met that this whole world existed inside your dream, right? At first, I thought you were teasing me by saying that this was your dream. But now, I actually think that it's a really beautiful idea. And now I realize that believing in you is really the same thing as believing in the future. That's especially important for someone like me who uses magic. You help me be more positive about the future and what I need to do. I should really be thanking you, Frederick, because you've taught me something very important too. All the times for this to happen. That's a big ship. Well, what is it? It's a pirate ship. They appear out of nowhere sometimes and attack vessels that travel up this river. The pirates sneak up from behind and ram their unsuspecting target. That's terrible. Maybe there's something we can do. We should repay them for helping us. I agree. But whatever we do, we have to move quickly or those people will try to board this ship. It's far too dangerous. These pirates, even their underlings, are very strong. Hey, that's no way for our captain to talk. Don't worry about a thing. Just leave it to us. Hmm, what's all the fuss? Is something happening? Still really sleepy. with an eye patch and a hook. Ooh, and I'll bet they have a lot of treasure. Hey, wait! Be don't! Oh, not you two! All right. 
We'll go over and keep them occupied. Meanwhile, try to pull the ship away as far as you can to keep them from boarding. Um, right. I'll do everything I can. Very good. If you'll excuse me.